Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It is the morning of Friday, May 8th, and the S&P 500 is up nicely. Uh, I thought it'd be the perfect time to create another video that combines a couple of my previous series into one and answers a couple of questions that were in the comments. Um, if you remember, my last two series were on TD Ameritrade API and also uh, Trading View Alerts. So in the Trading View Alerts video, I used Alpaca as the broker, uh, but I also want to give you another example that's slightly different and see if we can get TD Ameritrade API running in the cloud. And also instead of buying a common stock, I wanna see if we can trade an option. So let's see if we can buy a call or put option. The other question I wanted to answer is how to authenticate the request to AWS Lambda. So I'm gonna add a little passphrase in our webhook message and abort the request if that passphrase is invalid. So I'm gonna do this very quickly. And if you need any review, you can go to previous videos. I'm gonna be using AWS Chalice, which I have a series on. I'm gonna use TD Ameritrade API, which I also have a series on, and also be creating a TradingView webhook alert. So I'm gonna use all of those concepts uh, and build upon them into this video. And so if you need any review of how all that stuff works, you can go back and watch the previous series, but I'm gonna jump right into it. Step one, I have the chart of Apple open in TradingView. If you don't have TradingView, I'll leave a link in the description for you to sign up. So this is today's chart of Apple. You can see it's up nicely. Um, so my first thought, let's say I'm someone that likes to fade one of these big moves and I want to buy a put option. So uh, let's add an indicator to analyze, a simple indicator. So if I click here uh, for indicators and strategies, I can do RSI, for instance, relative strength index, and I add that to my chart. And you see I have this nice little oscillator um, so there's some default settings. So it's RSI 14 close. And so um, typically um, the default settings are overbought when the RSI is above 70 and oversold when it's below 30. So uh, if you look here, it looks like Apple is currently overbought. So I might say, hey, I want to trigger an alert when the RSI shows that Apple is overbought and order a put option. So how would I do that? So um, I already have the RSI. It was easy to add that to my chart. And you already see that Apple is in this overbought condition. Uh, so let's create an alert on this condition so that we can act on it. So on the right here, this little alarm clock, uh, I can click create alert. And on the condition, I can select this RSI 14 close. And what do I wanna do? I'm gonna say RSI crosses up and let's give it a value. So let's say the RSI above 70, let's, let's use 72. We'll say that's overbought and we only want that one time. And we want an email and a pop-up with this message, right? And so we wanna get notified when Apple crosses, uh, the RSI crosses above 72. So it's already crossed above 72. So just to force this to trigger here, let me see if I can tweak this a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna use 75.7. All right, and let's see if we can get that to trigger. All right, so we got it to trigger. It says the RSI of Apple crossed above 75.7 uh, on Apple stock, and I should also get an email, right? So this is my alert. And if you'll remember in the last video, we actually have a payload that we can use. So um, I'm gonna go to GitHub for our previous TradingView video. And I have this Hacking the Markets GitHub. If you wanna follow along and check out the code after this, but I saved the payload that it gives. And so we're gonna use this payload and we're gonna send a webhook request. So in a little bit, I'm gonna set this up as a webhook once we have the web the web in order. So I'm gonna paste that in for now and you'll see how uh, TradingView will actually populate these placeholders and I'm gonna use a JSON structure so I can post it to the web. So I'm gonna click save here and let's see where our RSI is now, um, 75.64. So let's say we set it to 76. 75.65 and see if we can get it to trigger again. All right. Okay, so we got it to trigger again and you see whenever the RSI overbought alert triggered, now we have a JSON payload and that's populated with the actual price of Apple stock when that trigger, when that webhook executed, right? So we have a lot of information that we can process on our webhook on the server side and determine which option to order based on this alert. So we have a condition that got triggered and we have price information. Now let's write the Python code and deploy it to the cloud. We're gonna write Python code to execute a TD Ameritrade option order. All right, so I'm on the command line. And if we remember in previous videos, we always have a virtual environment that we activate 
and I'm using a package called Chalice, which is a serverless framework for AWS Lambda. So I install that, pip3 install Chalice, and now I have Chalice. Now I create a new project. So we do Chalice new project, and we'll, we'll call it Trading View, Trading View, TDA, so TD Ameritrade uh, option alert. All right, so I have a new project. Now I'm gonna go to Visual Studio Code, and you'll see, uh, I'm gonna create a new window in Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna put it here, and I'm going to open that folder, and you'll see what's inside. So I'm calling it Trading View TD Ameritrade Option Alert. All right, this gives us a simple structure with an app.py, right? And just has a simple index and a requirements.txt. And if you'll remember, a Chalice gives me a local server. So I'm gonna go into that directory and type Chalice Local. A chalice Local, right? That runs a local web server and whenever I open it at localhost 8000, you'll see hello world. So we want more than hello world, right? So let's fill this out. So let's uh, make a few example methods and see if we can hook up TD Ameritrade to this uh, Chalice application. So I'm gonna go back to our hacking the markets and I already have a lot of this code written for TD Ameritrade. And so if you'll remember, um, we need a config.py, right? And so I'm going to copy this information. And what Chalice wants, if you want to deploy uh, to the cloud with some extra uh, libraries, um, you need a directory. So I create a directory called Chalice lib. Okay, so there's a directory called Chalice lib. And I'm going to include my TD Ameritrade token that, are, that I've already gotten on my desktop. That way I don't have to go through all the OAuth stuff again. We have a valid token. All right, so I have a directory called Chalice lib. I'm going to make a file called config.py. And I'm gonna put this information in it. Um, I'm going to replace these uh, this API key with mine. So look at the TD Ameritrade video if you want to remember how to generate an API key. Um, I don't need this anymore, and I don't need that, and I need my account ID from Ameritrade. So I'll fill that in, and I don't need this. So we should already have our token API key and account ID set up in advance before we build this Chalice webhook. All right. So I have my config.py. Um, there is a requirement, so we're gonna use TDA API, which is what we used in our previous video. So if you'll remember, um, in, in uh, our requirements text for TD Ameritrade, I used a package called TDA API. So that's all we're gonna need here. All right, and what else? All right, so we have an app.py, we're gonna have requirement package of TDA API. We're gonna have a config file. And so now what I'm gonna do is copy the token that I've generated in previous videos. So I have an authentication token for TD Ameritrade and I'm just gonna reuse that for this bot. So I'm gonna copy, um, I have it in another folder. So I have tra trading view, where do I have it? TD Ameritrade option alert. All right, and I have a token file, and I'm going to copy it to Trading View TD Ameritrade Option Alert Chalice Lib. Right. I want to copy the token file to Chalice Lib. So you have a token file already, and it's copied. Chalice Lib has config.py and a token. Uh, I'm going to stop the video and replace the API key and account ID with my own. You can use yours if, you, if you've created a TD Ameritrade app. So next steps, let's see if we can authenticate against TD Ameritrade using our config values. And let's see if we can write a route that uh, gets a stock quote just to make sure this is working. So let's do a simple route. I'm gonna call it a quote, right? And I'll call the function quote, right? And I'm gonna replace that. And let's see. Um, so let's look at what we did in our previous TD Ameritrade tutorial to create a client. So I have this trade.py and you see we have this auth.client uh, auth token from file. So we import from TD Ameritrade um, a few options. So I'm going to import these, copy this to the top. All right, so from TDA, import auth and client. And then we also have some order information here. I don't think we need that. Um, we're gonna import JSON, config, and date time since we might need those. 
and we're importing chalice as we were doing previously. And so I'm gonna take this part that says auth from token file, right? And I'll do that. So C equals auth dot client from token file, and it needs a token path. Well, we have a token already in our chalice lib directory, and we're not gonna need to do this Chrome driver stuff because we already have the token saved locally from our previous video, right? And so I have this line here that I will copy over and put it in uh, the GitHub repository when I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is set token path. So this is a variable. And then I'm going to build the path to the token file. That way our web app knows where the token is. So I'm getting the, path, the current path. I'm appending chalice lib to it. So that's like the subdirectory we're in. And then the file is called token. So I'm telling it where the token path is. So the token path is no longer in config. So I'm setting, saying client authenticate from token file. I'm giving a path to the token path. And then I'm also going to import the config. So I'm gonna do uh, from chalice lib import config. And so chalice, fit, chalice lib has my config file. And so since it has my config file, I have my API key. So I can authenticate using a token and my API key. And now let's see if I can call a method on it. C.get, and this library, TD Ameritrade, has a, a whole TDA API, it has a whole bunch of methods built in. So you see my auto completion, I have like get accounts, get option chain, and so forth. So I'll just do get quote, and it accepts a symbol. So let's see if I can get a quote for Apple stock, and I'm gonna restore store it in a variable called response, and I am going to return response, right? So let's hit this endpoint. So um, what I want to do, let's go, let's see. I'm gonna stop this web server with control C. All right, and I'm gonna do pip3 install dash r requirements text just to make sure I have TDA API, the uh, dependency installed, and then I'm gonna type chalice local. And let's see, no module name config. So config is in chalice lib now, so I don't need that part. All right, so it's restarting, and I'm going to do localhost 8000 and slash quote, and it says internal server error. What is it? OS is not defined. So I didn't import OS, so I'll import that. Refresh, and let's see what I got. Object of type response, not JSON serializable. So I think this has a method called JSON on it, so I'll call that, and let's run it again. And there you go. So already I have a web API that wraps around TD Ameritrade and I'm returning a quote for Apple stock and I have it in JSON format. You can see Apple's current uh, ask price and bid price. So that's 30801 and I have a lot of other information. So bam, we're already, we already have a Chalice app that can use a token and authenticate and it's running on my desktop on a local web server. Now let's deploy that to the cloud. So Chalice has a, a command called Chalice deploy and I'm gonna deploy this and see if it works. So I type chalice deploy, it's creating deployment package, creates an AWS Lambda function using my AWS secret key, and it creates a role, and it's going to give me, a, it's gonna package up TD Ameritrade API and uh, package it with my token in chalice lib and build my routes. And once this Lambda function is done creating, it's going to give me a REST API endpoint that I can use in a uh, trading view for my alert. So it gives me my REST API URL. So I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna put slash quote, and let's see if my stock quote bot works in the cloud. All right, and there you go. Works exactly the same running on Amazon right now. So I didn't set up a server or anything, it's serverless. Okay, so I have a stock quote, that's great. But you said we're going to order some options. So how do I do that? So let's make some more endpoints. So I'm gonna make another route called option chain. So I'll do option slash chain, okay? And then I'll call a function option chain. So when this route is hit, it's gonna call this function option chain, right? And another thing I'll do, let's make it accept a parameter. So quotes, for stock quote, I'm gonna use this little placeholder and say symbol, and there'll be an input for symbol. And then I'm gonna pass symbol to the get quote method, right? And what that means is I'll be able to pass any stock symbol here and get a quote. Same thing with option chain, I can do slash symbol, right? 
and then I'll pass symbol in as a parameter. And then now I'm going to authenticate again. So since I don't want to repeat this code, I need the same authentication multiple times. I don't want to repeat this. So let's just take this part out, the token path and the authentication. That way, all of these already have a client. So every function will already know, have this C variable globally. And I just need to call whatever method I need. So I'm going to do response equals C.get option chain symbol. And let's return that to the browser. And let's see if that works. So I save that. And I'm going to type chalice local again. Run this locally and test it out. All right, running a local server. And now I am going to try localhost 8000 option slash chain slash Apple. Well, I'll try Microsoft since we should be able to accept any symbol, right? And there you go. We have JSON data, the complete option chain, tons of option information uh, and prices available for Microsoft. So let's say uh, we have a symbol Microsoft stock June 5th. Uh, it looks like, um, and then we have a call for 197 for June 5th, 2020. We know the bid and ask on that option price. So great, we have a way to get uh, a common stock quotes and we have a way to get option quotes uh, for every single option that's available to us. Now let's, let's order one. So let's create another route for this. And instead of a get request, we're gonna do a post request, right? And so this will be the route we actually use for, uh, as our broker, to execute the option trade, we're going to have uh, Trading View make a post request with a webhook message to this option buy endpoint. So let's do that. So I'm going to do app.route and I'm going to say option slash uh, order. And since it's a post request, we need this methods equals post. And then I'm going to call this uh, option order. Okay. And so all we need. Uh, since TradingView passes this, passes this in a webhook message uh, as JSON, I'm going to say webhook message equals app.currentRequest. Chalice gives us access to the current request, and we can ask it what JSON was posted. So I'm going to access the JSON body. And so this will give us a webhook message. All right. And then we need to actually order an option. So in my TD Ameritrade series, I only showed you how to uh, get option chain data. I didn't show you how to actually execute uh, an option order. And that's because this isn't, uh, there's no, there's an equity order builder class in TDA API, but they didn't have a, an option order builder because I think the author doesn't really trade options. So I had to take a little bit of time to figure out how to place an option order with it. And the way you do that is with an order specification. So if I go to developer.tdameritrade.com slash guides, they actually have this place order samples. So they have some samples of how to place orders. And so since they support so many different uh, options for uh, creating orders, you see there's very complex JSON structures they use to represent an order. And so, but they do have one example for just buying a single option. So what you can do is copy this uh, JSON here and just put it as a Python dictionary. And so I'm gonna put this right here in the body. And so with TDA API, you can just send an order spec. We call this an order spec. So I'm going to say order spec equals that dictionary. I'm going to say response equals C.place order. And you give it your account ID, which is in our config file. And then you give it an order spec. And it'll place the order for whatever the JSON is in this order spec, right? So our order spec specifies that we're buying an option. So um, we just want a limit order. We want to give it a specific price. Let's put a really low price that isn't going to fill just so we can uh, test this out. So I'm going to say we want to buy an option for 25 cents, um, buy to open. And let's say we want three of them. It's the quantity and we need a symbol. So we showed how to get the option chain. So we have a bunch of symbols. So let's say we want this 182 call for June 12th. And that would actually be like $7 it looks like. Uh, so. I'm going to put this as a symbol. We're buying Microsoft 182 calls uh, for, I believe that's June, yeah, June 12th. So that's the symbol right there. So we just pull the symbol from the option chain and then we're gonna buy it, try to buy it for 25 cents, put in a limit order and we're gonna buy three of them, okay? And so we need a post request and yeah, I think we're good. Let's, let's uh, run this. So our server reloads. And I have Insomnia to test post requests. 
right? And so what I'll do is create a new JSON request. So uh, order and option will be the name of the request. And this is just a testing tool for testing locally. Normally, uh, TradingView is going to create this post request. So I'm going to post JSON. And I'm going to simulate what the webhook JSON message looks like, right? So I'm going to post to localhost 8000. And then our endpoint is option order slash option slash order, right? And I'll put the JSON we need, which I haven't really given it any parameters. But what we'll want to do is replace this price, quantity, and symbol. So I'm going to put price uh, 75 cents. And this is just simulating. We're not using it yet, but we'll swap out these values with what's in our request. So I'll do price, and then I'll do... Uh, quantity and symbol quantity. So I'll do five and symbol. And then I'm going to do, uh, let's get one of our Apple puts. So uh, uh, actually, I'll, I'll get that in a minute. Let me let me just do a different. Uh, actually, no, I have option chain data. It's variable now. So I can get the Apple option data here. So uh, let's do uh, See if I can find where the put options are. So I can filter this down and search for my puts, right? And so let's say we have this May 8th, 130 put. Yeah, let's go a little bit higher than that. Uh, let's see. Let's do this 310 put, right? I'll just get the symbol for that. And then I'll put that symbol in here. And let's post to our option order endpoint send. Uh, it didn't return anything, uh, but it didn't return an error. So yeah, I didn't I didn't return a response. So um, I'll do return code OK, just to return something in the future. And I'm going to check my TD Ameritrade account and see what happened. And you see it worked. We wrote Python code to execute an option order. So the Microsoft June 12th 182 call, we put in a limit order for three options. Um, for 25 cents. And that's probably not going to fill because it's more valuable than that, I'm sure, at this point. So uh, I'm going to cancel that order. And now let's see if we can make it work using data that comes in from our webhook message here, right? We're going to swap out uh, the hard coded values with uh, what's in the webhook message. So I'm going to do uh, webhook hook message, all right? And then we called this price. And then instead of quantity three hard coded, I'll do webhook message quantity, right? And then instead of a hard coded symbol, I'll do the webhook message symbol, right? Now, if I do that, it should use the in whatever information I put in this webhook. So I'm going to change this price to 95 cents. And I'm going to do five, call, five uh, of this put option. And I'll order seven of them, all right? So I'm going to click send, returns my code OK, go back to TD Ameritrade, check it. There you go, seven Apple 310 puts. I have an order in for those right now. So I'm going to cancel that, and I'm actually going to put this now in the cloud. I feel good about it. So I'm going to hit cancel, All right? And tell you what, I'm not going to put this in the cloud yet. Why? because I haven't authenticated this request at all. Anyone that knows the endpoint, it's a long endpoint that no one knows right now, but if anyone knows this endpoint, I put it on the video, you're gonna know it. So I need to type some kind of passphrase, right? And so we have our webhook message, right? So we can say if web webhook message, uh, we'll check if there's a passphrase in the web, webhook message. So if the key passphrase is in webhook message, right? Or if it's not in webhook message, right, then we can say uh, return code error and message. You didn't unauthorized, no passphrase, right? All right, and so not only do we want there to be a passphrase in the webhook message, we want it to actually match the one in our config file, right? So we'll say if um, webhook message passphrase not equal to config dot passphrase, then we can return another error saying 
um, invalid passphrase, right? Invalid passphrase, right? And let's test this out, right? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to send the request again. Um, let's see, did I stop it? Okay, so I send it. I didn't send a passphrase, so it says unauthorized no passphrase. And now I'm going to give it a passphrase so I can get past it. And I'm going to give it a big long string, right? And it's going to say invalid passphrase because it doesn't match ABC that's in my config file, right? So what if I put ABC in there? Then it says code OK. So I've protected my route with a passphrase so we can have trading view pass the secret password to our endpoint in order to authenticate the request. So we know that's OK now. And then now if I refresh this, we should see an order for seven more Apple options that I'm going to cancel. All right, so I'm going to cancel that. Good deal. All right, so we have an example request here. And I'm going to update my config file. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to deploy this as is and let it go. And then I'll change it later. So uh, let's do chalice deploy. Right, and that should still work. And so I'm gonna test my payload, my webhook message against the cloud one just one more time to make sure it works when it's in the cloud. So we have this URL, right? And I'm going to go back to Insomnia. I'm gonna put this URL in API option slash order, and I'm gonna give it the same Apple option and just switch it up. I'll do four for 90 cents. And I'll still give it the passphrase. I'll get it wrong at first, just to verify. Invalid passphrase, I'll get it right. All right, okay. And then that's running in the cloud. And it can order for Apple put options. It worked. So we'll cancel that out. So the last step, right, is we hook up our webhook message to uh, this particular endpoint. Okay, I'm back in trading view and I'm gonna use my alert. So I'm gonna recreate this alert just to start from scratch again. I'm gonna do create an alert. You see Apple stock, the RSI is like 78.43. So I'm gonna select RSI of 14 close. I'm gonna say crossing up and I'm gonna use an overbought level of let's say 78.5, right? And we have our webhook URL. Let me verify that this is correct. I'm gonna copy my webhook URL from the cloud, put it right there. I'm going to take my passphrase, my JSON payload, and put it here. And I'm also going to send it some extra placeholder data in case we want to do some calculations. I can do uh, open, right? And I'll pass it the opening price of the bar and let's say the close, right? And so we can pass data here in our JSON message, in our webhook, and then our Lambda function can process that in Python and maybe calculate the ideal option strike to buy. But for right now, I'm just gonna give it uh, a symbol directly and give it uh, some placeholder price data and see what happens. So I'm ordering for uh, put options when it's overbought and I'm gonna set a condition, let's say 77.7, uh, 78. Let's see if we can make this trigger. So I'm gonna do 78. So I created the alert. You see that uh, this orange bar is drawn on the screen here, showing where my alert would actually trigger. And so let's see if this will actually happen. So uh, waiting, let's wait a minute. All right, there it is. So our alert just got triggered. We said to alert us when the RSI crosses up above 78, which it did, indicating that Apple was overbought according to the conditions we have set up here. Once that alert was triggered, it posted this JSON message and also sends the open and closing price to our webhook. It posted over. Um, now, if we check our Ameritrade account and I refresh, you'll see that if you should see it ordered some options. Yes, it did. So we now have an open limit order for Apple put options for May the 8th, which is today. So aggressive put option that we just bought uh, after Apple was overbought. So yeah, there you have it. We accomplished a lot in this video. We created a local, locally running server. We tested it with Insomnia. We showed you how to use TD Ameritrade to uh, get uh, price quotes and how to have a REST endpoint that returns option chain data and a REST endpoint API endpoint that will execute an actual option buy. We hooked that up to TradingView, and so now we have an easy way to configure indicators within TradingView and have it post option orders 
to TD Ameritrade. We deployed a pre-authenticated token to the cloud, and we also addressed the question of how we could protect this webhook method with a passphrase. So uh, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to keep going with a lot of new brokers and hopefully build upon these strategies in the future.